Hello, welcome back to Lotus Literature. If you haven't been here before, my name is Amy and today I'm going to be showing you all what is on my September Julie Red pile. This is kind of a rough pile. Um, every month since I've gotten back into reading properly, I try to set myself seven to ten books to read for pleasure and enjoyment each month. Sometimes I read the books that I was meant to. Sometimes I might buy a new book and then decide that I want to read that straight away. But in general, I do try and stick to kind of what I've allotted myself, if you will. And I like to cover a wide range of genres, authors, kind of styles, um, like classics and modern books. I like a lot of things. So hopefully in today's video, I'll be able to give you maybe some ideas of what you could possibly read next. And if you see any of your favorites, do let me know either on Instagram or in the comments below. And I know I've changed my setup like a tiny bit. I just think this area is a bit nicer than my desk. Like my desk is like, it's got all my books, but it's a bit boring. Um, and the chair I was sat in was killing my back. So hopefully this new kind of setup, it's not really a setup, but this new area is a little bit nicer. Also, I might go put my beanie on because my hair, excuse my hair, it's semi-permanent dye and it's kind of going peachy blonde. Not the color that it's obviously meant to be. If you could see my setup, you would probably be laughing at me because I've literally got a cardboard box full of more books a fake plant, my phone is against the fake plant, which is on top of the box, and then my lamp is next to me just for some lighting. Um, it's a complete mess, but it will do for now, I guess. So without further ado, let's just get straight into what I plan to read in the coming weeks of September. All the books I'm kind of just gonna be stealing from either this pile or as, that's rude, <laughs> or as you probably won't be able to tell because I'm in the way, but I've taken the first book of the a Song of Ice and Fire collection, sort of series, if you will, by George R. R. Martin, and that is A Game of Thrones. Everyone probably knows about this by now, if not the books, the TV show at least. And I actually read 200 pages or so of this in first year of uni, but because my brain was a bit all over the place, as I keep saying, like I just didn't have the concentration span for a book of this size. So hopefully this month I can get a solid way through it. I know they're all like seven, eight hundred pages and it's such an in-depth story that like I really need to take my time with these to explore the characters, their relationships, kind of the factions, who likes who. I've watched the first season and I remember bits of it, but I actually watched it before I read the little snippet. So hoping to read this in the coming weeks and then maybe also on my September TBR pile is the second book, A Clash of Kings which I will get straight onto if I finish A Game of Thrones. And as you can see, they're quite big books. So like I said, I'm gonna need a lot of time to kind of take my time through these, be patient, explore characters, see who I really like. I remember liking Arya Stark, I think, Maisie Williams plays her, please correct me if I'm wrong there, um, in the show. But I do really like my fantasy, so hopefully, these will be as good as I remember the series, like the first season of the series being. And like I say, I do have all of the books here, so I can just pick the next one up as and when, don't have to worry about faffing or buying it, which is really great. The third book on my TBR pile for September is this tiny little version, it's like very small compared to a normal size book, of Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I do have Oliver Twist, which I again was supposed to read in first year. I read about 50 pages and I actually quite enjoyed it, but I'd run out of time by then, sort of when my brain kicked in saying, you gotta read this. Um, I'd run out of time to finish the whole thing in enough detail or maybe go for a reread. But if I have enough time in maybe October, November, I am gonna read Oliver Twist. But I bought Great Expectations online. This is the Collins Classics version. So the font is absolutely tiny, as you can see, and it's quite a thick, like, small book, about 400 pages, but that's decent for a classic. And I've not actually, apart from A Christmas Carol, obviously, read any proper Charles Dickens, so I'm really, really excited to get through to this one. The fourth book on my September to be read pile is George Orwell's Animal Farm, and this is my best friend Eleanor's copy. She gave this to me before I came away down to Southampton again because she knew that I'd gotten back into reading and I liked 1984. It's a brilliant book. I've not seen the film, but I read 1984 in first year just for pleasure. Like I did still manage to read some books off my own back. 
1984 was one of them and I absolutely, I, like, I adored it. It's such great dystopian fiction. Really kicked off the genre in my eyes. And Animal Farm is something, ooh. <laughs> Animal Farm is something that I've also wanted to read. And it's such a short book. Like, it's not even 100 pages. It's barely 100 pages. It's like 96, 97. So hopefully I can get through this in like a day or two. I did think it was longer, but there we go. And I don't know too much about this. I've not studied it. I've heard snippets of it, kind of like an animal uprising maybe. But I am really, really looking forward to reading this one because like I say, I've enjoyed Orwell before. So hopefully my second try of his novels is just as good as the first time. The fifth book on this month's to be read pile is The Chain by Adrian McKinty. And I picked this up in the works and I've already broken my book buying ban. Short sigh right here, I was gonna go on a book buying ban for September of like proper books, like charity shop books are fine because I buy like maybe three or four a month and it's not too big of a hole in the purse. But the works have three for five pounds on, on books and I bought The Chain Half a World Away and The Woods by Helen Coben. And I've seen this on Bookstagram a lot and it's looked really, really intriguing. Like the only way to get your child back is to kidnap another child, kind of starts the chain off. I haven't read a thriller for a little while. I think the last thriller I read was Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty or The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Enjoyed both of them, highly recommend both. And if you're on Bookstagram, you will probably still be seeing them quite a lot. But the chain, I love the cover. It's kind of reflective, like shiny. Quite like that in a book. But I'm glad I managed to pick this up in the three for five pounds because all the books in that are still, like this is still nine pounds. But the discounts you can get are amazing. You can get so, so much in the works. It's really, in my eyes, quite an underrated shop. Um, but yeah, the chain is on my to be read pile for this month and i really, really looking forward to this one. Not just looking forward to it, really, really looking forward to it. And all the reviews, there's like pages and pages of reviews at the, at the front of the book. They're all like extremely positive. I've never actually read a book with this many, this many positive reviews. I mean, even Stephen King in the front says, you won't shake this story off for a long time. I'm definitely gonna try and get through to this one this month. The next book on the to be read pile is a bit of a different one than all the fiction books I've got. And it's one that I wanted to read in August, but I never got round to it. And it is the Penguin Book of Myths and Legends of Ancient Egypt, complete with some amazing photographs, which the glare from the light is probably ruining. Like there's just some amazing like historical photographs in here. Like, there's so many and the pages are kind of like photography printer paper. But I believe this is kind of like Egyptian fictional myths, maybe to do with the gods. Um, like the death of Osiris is one I've seen. There's quite a lot of stories in here and there's actually a bit of historical introduction. I wanted to get into reading a bit more ancient history because I've always been really interested from like video games I've played, like Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey set in ancient Greece. I've always been quite interested in learning a bit more about ancient history and like how many gods they had, what each god was for, their traditions, just how they lived. And I think a book like this, I found this in the Waterstones ancient history section months and months back before like the lockdown stuff even started. And I couldn't get to it because it was stuck in my uni flat. But I bought this and I looked at the cover and I thought it's a penguin book. Penguin are quite well known. And uh, I didn't know they did stuff like this, but I'm really, really hoping to get to this. Even if I only read a few stories at a time, this is something that I can kind of work a way out, maybe even make some notes for it to just study as and when. This is a great way to get a little introduction into ancient history. And then if it's not your cup of tea, you can easily pass it on or give it away to someone who would probably be a bit more interested. I have a feeling I'm gonna quite like this because It'll really give me a more in-depth view into ancient history, not just Egypt, but kind of ancient history as a whole. The final book on my to be read pile for this month is Indra Sinha's Animals People. And when I was in lockdown, oh, goodbye book. <laughs> when I was in lockdown doing my last few online lectures for first year, one of the lecturers mentioned this book in relation to post-colonial literature, I believe. And it's also about the Bhopal incident with Union Carbide, which I've actually always been quite interested in. I studied it in GCSE Geography and I found it quite fascinating just like how corrupt some people can be 
and how much of an impact that events like that can truly have on ordinary people's lives. And I believe that Indra Senha here has taken a fictional twist on it, like he's put a fictional character in a real life situation, almost like Hosseini does in The Kite Runner, A Thousand Splendid Sons, which is also kind of why I have like a desire to read this now after just finishing those books. It's a bit of a hole in my heart that I don't have a Carlo Tossini book to read. But um, the blurb for this is really, really interesting. It's what really attracted me to it when my lecturer discussed it on the kind of recorded thing that he put up. And the fact that it kind of starts off with like, I used to be human once, that really drew me in because I'm thinking, well, what are you now? I think his name actually is Animal. Like that's like, my name is Amy, his name is Animal sort of thing. But I'm, I'm really like intrigued by this book. It was shortlisted for the 2007 Man Booker Prize. So it's obviously a book of quite decent critical acclaim. The Independent says it's an extraordinary achievement. And I just really, really wanna delve into this. It's been sat on my shelves, both at home and down here. And then Alex is ours back here for months on end now. And I feel really bad because I've promised myself over and over again to just, oh, I'll read this one next. I'll pick this one up next. So hopefully this month at some point I will get around to this. And if not, feel free to yell at me to read it in October because it's something that I, I've been waiting to read for months and just never really remembered it at the time. So that is my September to be red pile. I might add, change things a bit, um, take stuff out, add a few things if I read all of them. But it's about six or seven books in that list, which I know is like the lower end of what I said I set myself. But because uni's starting in a month, I do want to put more time into kind of getting back into studying, starting a routine for myself, kind of training my arm with all the writing I'm gonna be doing again because my handwriting's kind of gotten atrocious. <laughs> and just settling down while everyone kind of moves back down ready for university. So things are gonna be a little bit interrupted this month, I can already tell, hence why I've set myself less books on the pile. But saying that, I do hope to get through all of them. And if not, start some off at the start of October. And then at the end of October, I'm planning to do a video on sort of like Halloween, October horror reads, things that I want to get through when it's kind of a bit more spooky and it's the right time to be reading that kind of stuff. It's kind of the atmosphere is set for that kind of stuff. That's pretty much everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support, just not just on here, but on Instagram. I've got so many people message me saying like, oh, your video was really good. Like, I'm so glad you're doing this. Like, it's great. In regards to putting myself out there, a lot of my friends have said they're quite proud of me and how much my mental health has improved and it's really meant a lot straight away to have such a positive response and you know it's really encouraged me to carry on with this um, for the foreseeable future which is wonderful for me. So thank you once again for watching. If you enjoy the video or you enjoy any of the books that I have mentioned, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you want me to do a specific video or you want to talk about any of the books I've mentioned and I will see you in my next video. Thank you and goodbye.